real ground pounder is here. This here's the cruncher. Ride high above any traffic, maneuvering effortlessly over everything in its path. Turbo Hammer. There's never been a radio-controlled monster truck with this kind of speed. Ah yes, the RC monster truck. The big, heavy, and awkward behemoth pondering its way through front yards and into table legs across the globe. Wow! Crunch him again! And doing backflips? And hitting tracks in 60 plus miles an hour? What the hell happened? 1987. Walk Like an Egyptian is the most popular song, Cher is the most popular actress, and Burger King Burger Bundles is not the most popular burger. Although it should have been, because it was awesome. Burger King, the best food for fast times. It was also the year Tamiya launched two legendary little trucks, the Lunchbox and the Clodbuster. Following the success of their first popular radio-controlled monster truck, the Blackfoot one year earlier, the Clodbuster plunges the hobby into solid axle monster truck madness. Haven't you always wanted to own your own monster? Eight shocks, two motors, and four-wheel steering, the Clodbuster quickly became one of the most wheeled and one of the most modified RCs in history up to that point. Tamiya continued to evolve the electric monster with models like the Juggernaut and TXT1, which featured an advanced four-link suspension and cantilevered shocks all mounted to a stout aluminum chassis. And it wasn't just Tamiya getting in on the action. Companies like Kyosho continued to push the bounds of the monster craze with trucks like the absurd nitro-powered A-scale USA-1. These trucks all shared a couple key things in common. First, the solid axle design gave them distinct handling characteristics that resembled the full-size thing. That is to say wheelie-popping excitement over jumps and wild roll and turns, but limited ability to stay upright under tight cornering. Add in a few high-speed bumps and these things were rolling over faster than a spooked turtle. The second thing they all shared in common, for the most part, is that monster trucks available at the time required assembly following instructions and building them up piece by piece over several hours. While this formula had worked well for hobbyists and enthusiasts throughout the 80s and 90s, it hampered younger and less patient customers from buying these models. However, there was one truck that broke the mold. One model that forever changed the hobby and led to a full-on, untamed monster truck craze. One model that led to so many sales, stores sold out instantly, lines wrapped around blocks, and competitors scrambled to catch up. In 1999, the Texas-based Traxxas launched an RC revolution with the T-Max. This 1/10th scale 4x4 monster truck featured an anodized aluminum frame, four-wheel drive, and a .15 nitro engine and two-speed automatic transmission with a selectable reverse. And boy, did it rock the RC world. So much, it is definitely deserving of its own video. But it's a rig that launched just a year later that I want to focus on today. Its cousin, the Emax. See, the Emax featured many of the same features and capability of the T-Max, but while the T-Max launched a nitro revolution, the Emax previewed the transition to electric, but 10 years early. Many successful electric rigs from the 80s and 90s featured sealed canned brush motors in 380 or 540 sizes. The Emax was equipped with twin 550 size brush motors called the Titan 550. To feed the beasts, an innovative dual battery setup was implemented. In an era before LiPo's nickel metal hydrate or common at the time, nickel cadmium packs ruled the electric space. And while durable, these older 6 and 7 cell units simply do not have the energy density of modern batteries and are therefore tremendously heavy in comparison. The solution two batteries mounted low in the chassis. These were wired in series to an all new electronic speed control designed by American electronic manufacturer Novak. The story doesn't end there though. Traxxas struggled to deliver a product that was able to tackle extremely challenging, rugged, slow speed terrain, but also deliver on top end performance. The solution was a multi-speed transmission, similar to what was found in the T-Max. However, unlike its nitro stable mate, the Emax would be shifted manually via a third toggle located on the transmitter. For slow speed torque, the red toggle could be pushed down, putting less strain on the motors and speed control. For high speed bashing, the toggle could be flipped upwards to unleash speeds of over 30 miles an hour. The manual states the Emax is meant to be shifted on the fly, starting in first, then engaging the second once speeds are higher. 
The reality is the complicated and unreliable gearbox that was typically left in second and never shifted again. Later versions of the Emacs did away with the two-speed transmission altogether, opting for a far more reliable single-speed unit. Power was sent through all four wheels via independent suspension. Eight shocks with dual A-arms at each corner sent the trend for the rebirth of the monster truck and ultimately the explosion of the Truggy in the early 2000s. Some 20 years on and the Emacs is still a fun rig. I purchased mine on eBay and finding an early one means spending a shocking amount of money, often over $300 for a decent runner. A new shift servo and receiver were all this truck needed to hit the dirt. By modern standards, acceleration and top speeds are mild, topping out in the low 20 mile per hour range. Even still, the Dual Titans provide plenty of top end to find the limits of the soft suspension. The 8 shocks struggle to heave the rear end of the heavy beast back into position after a full compression. The rear skid plate bottoms up frequently and the truck squats and dives in every possible direction. Roll in corners is dramatic but manageable, leading to an extremely entertaining driving experience. Tire glue is a must for high grip surfaces, and these early 3906 trucks were a little narrower than their later siblings. An adjustment of the shock mount position can completely transform the handling on track. Big surprise for me was the extreme entertainment value and usefulness of the two-speed transmission. After several minutes of full throttle high gear fun, the twin brushed motors were hotter than an early 2000s Britney Spears movie. Selecting first gear for some slow speed crawling was a welcome relief on the powertrain components. In first gear, slow progressive throttle inputs are a breeze. The Chevron style tires do a great job of biting on most terrain and while not a solid axle crawler, the Emacs offers a surprising amount of capability for an open diff rig. You also must drive the Emacs as you sail the Emacs. The steering on this truck is pretty equivalent to a barge. You turn the wheel and then a couple seconds later, the truck might decide to wander in that direction. What's not slow is the amount of time it takes for the batteries to die. I ran this truck on brand new 6,200 milliamp hour packs and some 15 to 17 minutes later, the fun was over. Imagine what this thing was like back in 2000 on 1500 or 2000 milliamp hour packs as was so common. Traxxas absolutely nailed the transmitter on this rig. It falls perfectly to the hand. You've got adjustments for trim and reversal of all the channels and it just feels so great. Durability was never a strong suit for the E and T Max series. Hobbies back in the day may remember shock towers breaking constantly, skid plates snapping constantly, and bulkheads breaking resulting in a truck literally cracked in half. Luckily, a huge aftermarket quickly blossomed, making just about every part available in an upgraded material. Overall though, even 23 years after its launch, the Emax is still an incredibly fun truck. The wide range of terrain from road to rocks that this truck can tackle is still astounding today, and it is a joy in just about every situation. More importantly, in the grand scheme of the hobby, the Max trucks paved the way for the brushless monsters we know and love today. Without their ready-to-run convenience and the immense community that surrounded them, the Truggy and Monster Truck scene would not be what it is.